How's it, how's it guys? One of the things that I miss dearly in photography is holding a fresh print in my hand. There's something indescribable almost in the difference between an image on the screen and, and an image, a printed image, physical object in your hand. Now, recently I was talking with Tomasz from Frames Magazine and he very generously sent me over the entire collection of frames. And there's an editor's letter here in the first episode from Tomasz that I think sums up quite neatly why magazines like this are so important in photography. A photograph on paper receives one more very special dimension it starts speaking to you. It invites you to be part of itself or lets you hold it and touch it. Enjoy these moments, take your time, spend several long moments with each individual photograph you discover in this very first edition of frames. And that is something that I, I feel is, is, is a dying event in photography, the, the idea of actually holding something. Because it is amazing when you see an image printed. And not only that, but like in this episode of Frames, we get some insight into the images. And I thought what I was going to do, I thought, you know, well, we could sit here and I could page through, I could make some notes and we could talk very earnestly about, you know, printed images and actually discuss the images. But I want to actually do almost like a reaction video where I'm looking through with you at the same time and seeing how I feel about these photographs. Now I have cheated a little bit because I did look at the Michael uh, Kenner images to begin with because I love Michael Kenner and they are wonderful. It's beautiful to see them printed. You know, there is something special about it. And also the fact that there is accompanying text that he talks you through, you know, the not the technical process of the image, but the event surrounding it. There's this photograph here called the Tian Tan Buddha and you know, he talks about this massive Buddha that it has taken 12 years to complete and he has studied and photographed it from many angles and in different weather conditions and often with long exposures, but he finds himself constantly drawn back to this handheld snap, and those are his words, made with a plastic Holger camera from a moving Kaibu car in pouring rain. That, uh, you know, it, it often, you know, we sort of think about, oh, yeah, these images are planned and, and you know, and really meticulously crafted together. But sometimes it is just a snap. He goes on further to say, you know, as with most photography, the possibility of individual interpretation lies in the eyes and the mind of each beholder. Then I rather like that. What a wonderful insight that you don't get when you look at you know, photographs on a screen or on a website and stuff, because they, they seem to be divorced almost from the way that the, you know, the, the, the photographer is, is thinking about, especially when they go off into the wild of the internet. Now, you know, as I said, I flicked through the Michael Kenner stuff for a while and, you know, I really enjoyed that. And then towards the end of that, I came across a preface page again of a photographer called Phil Penman. And, and I turned the page and I was confronted, and I'll put this up on screen for you guys, confronted with this image here, which I just, I was like, wow. Oh my God, I love this photograph. It, it is everything that I love about photography. It's all you know, my own personal photography. It is, it's, it's got this art, uh, you know, architectural sort of feel to it. It feels like it's, you know, uh, an, uh, an Eric Stoller, or sorry, Ezra, Ezra Stoller, or, you know, maybe like a Julius Shulman or something. It's got that sort of feel to it. But it also is reminiscent of Steichen and, and Stieglitz and all those, you know, straight photographers and pictorialism. Oh, it's just everything in there. But what an amazing image. It is so simple on the face of it and yet so striking. I, I'm now going to turn the page for the first time to see his images. And, and okay, this next shot is all the skyscrapers. That's a little bit more kind of, you know, sort of middle of the road. I, I get it. It's, it's, it's nice and stuff, but it doesn't wow me the way that the first one did. The use of the blacks and the shadows and the contrast. This feels a little bit more like we have seen something before. And then we kind of, it, it's an interesting mix. He's, he's got an image here that, that springs to mind like kind of FSA, sort of Walker Evans kind of things. And 
that I find that what is an interesting mixture. Now, obviously, he's probably documenting, and I haven't read all the pieces. Obviously, I'm just going as we go along. You know, New York, and he says here, my images have gone from full length and city landscapes to more intimate shots. Okay, yeah, I get that, and and I think this is partly because of my need for social interaction. This was not a conscious thing, just something I became aware of looking through my work. What an interesting insight that that first image, the, the dramatic scene, it is very different to, to this one, that there is a sort of a divorcedness, you know, that he's, he's kind of standing up for the crowd. And, and, you know, I actually quite like that in cities, that you can be anonymous, but he's obviously feeling that he wants to connect more with the, the real life of the city and and i think that's a, a really brave move to kind of throw off one approach and and almost go to the opposite end of it wow yeah what a what an interesting collection of images and there's some more here of just you know more sort of slightly documentary work and and i think there's a real you know real interest in what he's he's photographing they're not particularly my my favorite things i, th I think his more abstract kind of more graphic design works for me personally but that's because you know I'm um, that's what I'm I'm drawn to now we have a photographer called Yalom Viral oh Yalom Viral I, I, if I pronounce these things incorrectly I'm, I'm terribly sorry uh, from Turkey and I, I don't know if, if Yalom is, is a, a male or a female I'm not, I'm not really sure not that it matters a great deal but if I reference him or her right and these are, are very different they're more like a photo montage kind of feel and and interesting enough i have been I, I think about sort of pictorialism a lot because i've been giving it some thought recently when i look at these images there is an interesting sort of vibe to them that they have this kind of pictorialist feel now there's nothing written in the the, the information here so far that i've seen that talks about the process of what what uh, yalem is doing but it does have that feel for, you know, I, I'm sort of put in mind of, you know, again, I'm going to mention, you know, um, uh, Edward Steich and, and his sort of pictorialist images, you know, the hand colouring and, and things like that. And while the photographs themselves, from a composition point of view, may not be the world's most amazing images, there is something about the process that the, he has used, and I'm sorry if, if Yellum is, is a female's name, that intrigues me because it's not like a filter that he's just slapped on in, in Photoshop. It, it, this is something that's done with, with intent and something that's done with purpose. And, and I really like the feel that is being conveyed with these. It is the total opposite to, you know, a lot of the very sharp and pixel perfect images that we see and this is of course the beauty of of a magazine is that you go through these things and you are introduced to work that you would probably uh, you know, struggle to see in the same context or in the same arena online you know, you, yes, these all may come up on an Instagram feed or something like that, but then it's a single image being bombarded by all the other images around it. Whereas here with this photograph, we can enjoy it by itself. And that, you know, that is, that is one of the, the things, and I'm going to keep saying one of the things, it's, it's like a half-fisted way of me kind of getting ers and ums out of my conversation, that... I, I love about magazines and I, I, I have genuinely missed. I haven't really, you know, had zines or, or magazines or anything for a long time. And I think we're going to get some, some, some portrait photography here because we have Olga Karlovac um, with uh, In the Mirror and a selection of uh, self portraits. And even, you know, here, oh, there we look at that. Somebody, this is, this is great because this is so not what you would expect. To see is it that that blurry abstract just a suggestion of a person oh yeah i'm really i'm i'm so enjoying these straight away and <laughs> just the next one just behind the shades of light and again i do hope that i can find these to put up on on screen because wow this i, I olga i'm loving this kind of stuff i you know and there's some some surprises this this is i think a wonderful example of 
you know, photographers who are willing to, you know, try some things out, go, go a little bit further out. And, and, and I don't think this is really just the result of you know, an afternoon of going, oh, I'm going to, you know, do some blurry portraits and what have you. This is somebody who has worked at this and, and, and has, has, has built this idea. And there are photographs here that are also starting to go a little bit further, starting to really give me something to, to, to latch into in terms of story. And yet, funnily enough, because there, is no, there, there isn't very much here to, for us to kind of you know, look at beyond these suggestions of shapes. And maybe that's why it works so nicely. And, and I would suggest if you want to try these kind of things is find a photographer who you like, or you kind of go, wow, you know, this is a, this is a, a, a piece that I would like to try and emulate and break down how they have done this. What is the process here? You know, looking at Olga's photographs, Yes, there's some blurriness and there's some probably some long exposures, but what else is she doing in here? How else is she getting this this process to result in these images? Now we have a photographer called oh, well, there's actually a piece that says conversation. So this is quite a you know a, another interesting thing that you don't often find, you know, when you're on a website or what have you, that there's a, a conversation here. Um, you know, an interview between Richard Shong Tartri, uh, photojournalist for the Minneapolis uh, Star Tribune, and uh, by W. Scott Olson. And, you know, these are, these are photographs, obviously, they are, um, there's some writers. I say obviously, they're not obviously, because, you know, you can't see them, but they're up on, on screen. And I, don't, I won't have to, obviously I'm not going to go into the whole thing, because I want you to look at them, I want you to go out and get a magazine. But it's wonderful that there are so many things in the same place that we could look at, no, no, not just great photographs with a little bit of exposition from the photographers. And I, I will say what I find refreshing is that it is less about the gear. There aren't very many references to equipment here. It's more about how they're feeling about the images, some of the backgrounds behind them and, and things of that nature. And yeah, I'm really, I, I think I've seen this, this image somewhere before. Um, this is Malala, ooh, sorry, Malala Yousafzari, was um, that By Shirin Nishat. Um, I think these, I th oh, this is why I've seen it, because I've seen it at the National Portrait Gallery. Um, these faces with the, the, the words written over them. Um, again, a, a, an interesting, interesting project. and. And, you know, that's, again, coming back to the idea that we are introduced to images and photographers and ways of doing things with and through the medium of, of magazines like Frames that we would never have experienced otherwise. What a wonderful thing. I'm so pleased that Tomash has, has sent me things. And, and here at the back, there's, there's a whole bunch of of other also lovely, wonderful images, which I'll put up on screen here, um, you know, from a photographer called Curtis, uh, sorry, excuse me, Curtis Salonik, um, which are more kind of, you know, like, they feel like they're multimedia pieces and they feel like they're, you know, some, some more digital art. And, and I'm going to leave you with, you know, sort of saying, what is, you know, what is the difference between, Photography, I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the episode about, you know, pictorialism and stuff like that, where they were manipulating prints and doing all sorts of things to make them look like paintings. And yet they are heralded, they're held up in great regard within photographic circles. Whereas today, people who create digital images, who use photography and Photoshop together to create something different, sometimes feel, they seem to be, it's like they're pushed off to one side. I'd be interested to let, to, to, you know, to hear what you think. So yeah, so thanks ever so much for watching. And if you are interested in, you know, finding out more about Edward Steichen, check out this video right here. See you later. What do you mean see you later? It's thanks for watching. <laughs> Cheers.